Yeah, well, we can dive right in. We only have an hour and I want to give Kristen all of it. Um, so thanks for coming. I know we've got a lot of people registered and they will trickle in as usual and that's all good. The recording of this will go onto our YouTube channel so you can find it there again. Welcome to the painting challenge at Masterius. I'm so pleased um, to showcase Kristen Palana. She's one of our master artist mentors, a phenomenal artist and um, out of the box thinker, I would say. Um, she is going to, well, she has a mentorship group uh, starting up and a course coming up and they're all kind of connected because what she do, does that's unique is um, she uses AI um, to help um, her creative process and to put that into good words uh, she's going to show us how to like choose a symbol that has significance to people to set up a structure and composition and then show how to fill um, that with patterns similar to a quilt or stained glass window that has little partitions in her style which is cool um, and one thing that we love about this event in particular is uh, you're welcome to create alongside Kristen or just watch whatever you like. And then we get back together next week, same place, same time. Um, I think it's the same link. You'll get an email um, uh, before. And I'm going to share everyone's creations. So when you have finished your creation, you can send it to, I'll put it in the chat, you can send it to um, ginger at masteries.com. She's going to collect them all up. She creates a beautiful presentation and then I get to share it with you next week. Uh, and it's so, so good to see everyone's interpretation, everyone's style coming through. And then also the story, because um, this one's going to be a little bit more significant um, given what we're, what we're diving into uh, with symbolism and whatnot. Uh, and then we have prizes next week, not for the best painting or, or art piece or creation. We don't do that at Masteries, um, but we'll just have a random draw for a member and non-member. So um, yeah, so if you have questions as we go along, please feel free to put them in the chat or you can turn on your microphone and just ask. We are a very interactive bunch. Hi everyone, hi Valerie. I can see you all coming in, hi Mindy. Uh, let me just quickly introduce Kristen. Um, aside from what I've already said, she is an American Portuguese multidisciplinary artist based in Malawi. Uh, after decades as a digital artist, she has reconnected with her fine art roots by embracing mixed media drawing and painting. Kristen's animated films have screened in over 75 international film festivals, earning numerous Best Animated Short Film Awards, including at the Cane Short Film Festival, Italy International Film Festival, and the Sunscreen Film Festival. Uh, she's an uh, educator. She's a mentor with us. Uh, she works with students all the time. She's very encouraging. And her take on AI, I think, is really refreshing and really healthy. Um, I'm excited to hear about it more, how we as artists can use AI to our benefit, to inform our process, our creativity, and even our story. <sighs> so let's dive in. Kristen, I'm handing it over to you. All right, wow, what a nice introduction. Thanks so much for having me. Hi, everybody. So good to see uh, familiar and new faces all at the same time. This is amazing. Um, I was just uh, I was just telling Julie that um, I've done so many lessons on the computer with screencasting and everything, but I've been you know setting up my camera uh, to to do something that's more fine art related. Uh, my background is actually digital media for the last 20, 20 something years. Um, I've been teaching university students on four continents. I'm currently in Malawi which is in Southern Africa, although I'm actually moving in July. And I'll probably find out on Monday or Tuesday next week where I'm moving to. So big uh, question. If you see a question mark hanging over my head, that's why. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> how, how is it that you don't know where you're moving, Kristen? Because uh, in 2016, I took a two-year leave of absence from the American University of Rome, where I 
um, was tenured and, and teaching for 11 years because my husband is with the World Food Program and we have, and it was always um, a little nudge that I, I've always wanted to live and work in developing countries. So we lived in Myanmar for three years and now Malawi for five years and the next country we go to will be another World Food Program duty station, but a bigger city than what I'm in now. So possibly back to Rome, Italy, which is their mm -hmm. headquarters, or, uh, South Africa or Kenya, or I don't know, maybe a wild card, but probably one of those three places. That is so exciting. Good for you. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So, um, okay. Well, anyway, so thank you for coming. Um, I wanted to share a little bit. Um, I hope I can share my screen for a little bit yep. and then I'll... Um, and then we'll move on over to the, the easel. But I just wanted to share the kind of work that I've been making. So Julie introduced me and my digital media stuff and animation. I actually started out as a painter. Um, that was my undergraduate degree. I went to Massachusetts College of Art in Boston, and now it's called Massachusetts College of Art and Design, um, where I got a painting degree. But then for graduate school, I went digital. And so uh, my master's is in computer graphics and interactive media. But I think it's because I have a hard time committing to one media medium. So I like to uh, cover all my bases and uh, go back and forth. So um, may I just, let me see, I'm just gonna share my screen. By the way, as I'm showing you stuff, please um, yell if you wanna um, ask a question or uh, contribute. I might not always be able to see you if you're gesticulating wildly. <laughs> so just um, better for you to either um, tell Julie or to um, turn on your microphone. Yeah, you can right. put your questions in the chat as well. Or yeah. chat, yes. Yeah, whatever you prefer. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new Masteries videos are added. All right, can you see? Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. All right, um, so let's see. I just wanted to share with you because when I start, I, oh, first of all, can you see my screen? Yes, looks good. All right. Actually, where am I starting? Um, I'm just going to go back to my main website for just a moment. I just want to go back a few years before I uh, show you the fine art work that I'm doing. So basically, um, I'm going to show you today how to actually concede the a little bit in this uh, close up of one of my sacred geometry pieces, what I like to do, what I've been doing the last two years or so, even more actually, last three, four years, is I like to take symbols that have that has significance to individuals and communities. Uh, in this particular one, this is a sacred geometry symbol. And then uh, because I'm a big fan of comic books and graphic novels and stained glass windows, uh, and German expressionism with this like heavy dark outlines. I just love containers and uh, structures and then filling them up with patterns and colors and uh, contrasting colors. So that's what we're gonna explore a little bit today. Um, but before I do that, I just wanna show you. So basically I went, just in case you're wondering like how did you go from animation to this, uh, I'll just kind of give you the the stepping stone really quickly. So, um, if you're if you hate design and illustration, my apologies. <laughs> but um, when I first moved to Malawi, there were no universities here that have art and design uh, that I could go and and teach at. Like in Myanmar, Myanmar didn't either actually. But somehow, what is it? Build a door. Uh, if there are no opportunity, if opportunity doesn't knock. Build a door, Milton Burrell, good quote. Mm, yeah. um, but anyway, when I moved to Malawi, I started making uh, a series of characters for United Nations organizations, in particular United Nations Population Fund. And I think if you have a look at the way that these illustrations are set up, you'll see, so these are digital. These are not uh, painting or drawing or anything. This is uh, drawing in Photoshop using my three favorite brushes, all hand done. Uh, but but basically on the computer. But um, these were the characters that I created. And it basically was an animation series where each character represents a different um, beneficiary of United Nations Population Fund in Malawi. And the main character is a teen mom. There's a, a child bride who ran away. 
uh, a, a, a kid with autism, I almost said autism, albinism, mm. a fistula survivor, a refugee and her brother, not her son, a former gang member and an AIDS activist. But I worked together with my Malawian colleagues to create these characters. And then we made animations with them um, with just me. So making an animation is actually very labor intensive. Usually you need a, a big, sorry, I just want to so they actually took the characters and they put them oh, in mobile cool. health clinics. Yeah, yeah, so these were reoccurring characters, but I wanted to share with you, once the pandemic happened was when they started asking me, you know, um, the, the masks that we have here in Malawi are very bright and colorful and they're using local uh, Chitenji cloth. Uh, so you can see a little bit more in this one from 2021 that as people were masking up, it, it actually sort of awakened a bit of a love for me, uh, from me, um, of uh, Chitendi patterns. And just uh, to show you where these come from. So one of my big influences, uh, you can, can you see me? Or should I stop sharing my screen? Uh, yeah, we can see you. You can see me. So yeah. this is, uh, I don't know if you can see just for a moment, um, these Chitendi patterns and cloths from Malawi are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And basically what they are, they're, they're just colorful bits of cloth. And these are actually bottle caps that are kind of fastened together with the different Chitenji cloths. And when you put them all together, they kind of have a quilt effect. And so that's something that I started to explore when I got to Malawi. So I'm going to get out of these illustrations now and go to fine art. So before I got to the sacred geometry series, very quickly again, um, you can see some of my uh, recent artwork. They all are symbols that uh, resonate with people. So for example, this is a protection symbol. So this uh, sacred geometry. Hang on. Actually, hold on one second. I just want to show you the, the next thing that I did. But I need to go down, 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 down. Hang on. Should probably just go to the animals category. Our, so this elephant, for example. So this is a wood carving from Malawi, and it's just basically um, a, a wood carving with these uh, Chitenji bottle caps in the background. And what I discovered as I made more of these, so these are some guinea fowl, is um, I just really liked putting all of these different patterns together. And then that led to um, the current series that I've been working on, which I'll just jump over to. And then I will start, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Just to show you a bit closer, because uh, when I start a new uh, drawing and artwork, it kind of looks a bit like a train wreck because it takes a while for it to, to develop over time. So that's why I just wanted to spend a little bit of time showing you a couple of finished things. So this is a uh, Merkaba, it's a sacred geometry symbol. And this is a healing meditation artwork that I made uh, when I was doing a residency in South Africa. And um, I'll just kind of go through these. So these are different sacred geometry symbols and they all start the same way. They start out as black and white outlines. And then depending on what the intent of the piece is, I'll fill up those sections with different things. So this one's on food security, which is sort of close to my heart as someone I've also done a lot of projects with the World Food Program. So this is the seed of life sacred geometry symbol, which is all about creation and abundance. And I made it basically into harvest. This is about 18 inches by 18 inches. And when I do one of these, it takes me like three weeks. Um, I'm just very slow, as you can see, because there's just a lot of detail. Uh, this is a... Um, this is also a sacred geometry symbol about uh, unity. And so this is uh, actually has patterns from every continent, skin tones, uh, et cetera. Mm. There's a couple of, uh, I, I am also um, heavily influenced by not just the textiles of Malawi and Myanmar before that, which also had really beautiful, colorful textiles, but uh, hand-woven baskets, basically um, craft, uh, crafts and things that women make that don't always uh, get seen as high art. So that's uh, these are basically my influences. And uh, after making that South African one, I went to the US and I made an American 
version. And just one disclaimer that I wanted to make, because I know it can be a little bit controversial to, um, to use patterns from uh, Native American cultures, but hear me out. Um, basically, what I did is this is a um, this is a, a vector equilibrium symbol from sacred geometry, and it's about unity. And I decided I wanted to tell a story about my birth country, the United States. So I used this symbol, and originally it was just in a circle. It only became a dream catcher later. Um, and then the center is a stained glass hurricane, and then the different uh, a representation of some of the different. Uh, skin tones that you can find in the U.S. And then what I wanted to do, um, I, I, wanted, I didn't feel like I could tell a story about the U.S. without talking about the people who live there now, but lived there in the past as well, which is why I uh, got 12, um, 12 subregions of the U.S. and I, I decided to represent them with uh, patterns inspired by cultures, uh, Native American and indigenous cultures living in those areas and then the next layer are just different um, uh, landscapes and cityscapes in the modern US and then Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Dreamcatcher. So all of these have a story and I won't bore you, but mm -hmm. anyway, that's the that's the rundown um, before. I'm just gonna quit out of that. Any questions so far? It's amazing uh, the thought and planning uh, that goes into each piece. Do you write up kind of the story behind it, Kristen? Yes. And in fact, sometimes I'm a little bit wary about applying to shows and prizes if they don't ask for the story mm. or like a description, because I just feel like oh, it just it just needs that little, you know, explanation. Yeah. Um, but I, it is something that I have when I display my work in galleries or on my website. And fun fact, and maybe, and maybe you already already know this, but um, you know, I think many of us are a fan of, of Vincent van Gogh. And uh, what's interesting about him is uh, nobody would have he would have never been discovered had not his sister in law Mary, uh, Theo's wife, uh, she inherited all these worthless Van Gogh paintings mm -hmm. when he died and then her husband died and she had no choice but to kind of take them to galleries and she discovered the letters between the two brothers and she decided to present the work with the stories and that's how Van Gogh became uh, beloved uh, and people became interested in his work when they saw the stories behind it so yeah I'm a big fan of uh, explanations yeah that's great beautiful um, anyway, so what I wanted to, to share with you, so I'm going to just uh, go out of here now, go out of here, go to, oh, um, basically what happens when I'm making a new artwork is I look for symbols that are going to resonate with people. And sometimes they're simple and sometimes they're complicated. Um, you could definitely argue that the sacred geometry ones are a bit complicated, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, you can uh, you can basically for some people they just want to do an animal and that's their symbol. It could be um, a peace symbol. I've done um, peace doves, mosaic type things, animals, uh, yin yang symbols. Basically, I just decide in my studio when I'm starting a new piece how do I want people to feel and what's going to resonate. And so um, one of the websites which I'm showing you right now that I like so much. It's a fairly new website, actually. If you ever are stuck on ideas and you want to um, just explore symbols, there's this one called Symbol Icon. I think it's an Italian website, actually. And they have a whole gallery. Can you see this? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it goes through like Egyptian, Hopi, you know, North European, South American, sacred geometry, but it's just basically a library of symbols. I mean, you can also, of course, just use uh, Google, but uh, I also like to use AI for my research. So today, let me, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just for a moment. Hello. Um, just to, to share with you. So I was thinking that for today, uh, this, uh, I don't know if you can see this, this is a postcard of an original artwork, a mixed media drawing, but I've sold it, so I don't have it. So um, I know it's a bit of a glare here. But uh, this is basically a Malawian wood carving 
with the Chitenji bottle caps or quilted pattern behind it. This is one of my placemats. Mm -hmm. So I just have found that when you put different patterns together, even if you're not having a good day in the studio, it usually really has a dynamic look to it. So uh, I also plan to be teaching so-called non-artists this technique as well, because I feel like if you just approach it with the right attitude, lots of color, and not a lot of self-criticism, you're gonna end up with something beautiful. Um, in the same way that my grandmother used to make quilts, she didn't think of herself as an artist, and many of these textile uh, artists who make these, uh, you know, chitenji patterns, they don't think of themselves as artists either, but when you put everything together, it's really beautiful, especially if you're thinking about carrying certain colors across or mm -hmm. alternating um, dark and light. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, just one thing that I wanted to share. So I don't know if you saw, but I was talking about in uh, actually a Mastrius uh, chat that I wanted to do, and um, I've set it up. And the reason I showed you all this finished art is because when I've started something, it basically looks ba really bad like this. So uh, it's this is like, you know, showing you um, a highly unfinished, just started piece, but this is basically how they start off. So what I wanted to do, and I wanted to do it in this call, but I realized I need to do more research in order to do a good job with this. So I just want to explain very quickly. So basically what I did is I wanted to have a floating woman holding a bouquet, uh, set it up kind of like a stained glass structure. And I think she's going to be a silhouette, but I'm not sure yet. And I wanted to have uh, six areas behind her. And uh, basically this is gonna be, this is kind of inspired, I don't know if you're familiar with The Birthday by Marc Chagall, 1915 um, painting. I can show you when I share my screen again. Um, it, it's full of emotion. And this is basically um, a, a woman on her birthday, but she's getting older. And she lives in a Western culture that tells you that with every birthday, you somehow become less valuable. And so what I wanted to do is take a silhouette of this woman with her bouquet on her birthday, and then um, research also using AI and chat GPT to help me find the right cultures. But I wanted to look at cultures on all six inhabited continents where women or elders are revered and use a pattern representation of that culture in the background to kind of lift her up, almost like they're having a conversation with each other. So that's the, the grand intent behind this, but I knew that I couldn't uh, do this all in one hour. So I just wanted to share with you that I've started, and then I wanted to sh also share with you my chat GPT conversation that will inform this work. Do I have time to show that, Julie, or should I just launch into drawing? Um we're we're 23 minutes in uh so you have uh 40 ish minutes left um okay. up to you <laughs> just flat, just uh, i just need five minutes and then i'll yeah. get going That's good. so yeah because um okay one moment i did share the link folks of uh symbolic icon.com in the oh, chat. thank you mm. so okay Sometimes I bounce ideas. Actually, I've only started doing this like two months ago and it informed uh, my, the last sacred geometry piece that I did uh, in terms of which cultures to include. So basically, I just wanted to share this with you. I have a, an account with my husband and uh, we share this chat GPT account. And basically, I just uh, put in a prompt that um, about my intent. And I just wanted it to recommend uh, different cultures that have strong artistic uh, traditions that revere women, particularly older women, not necessarily just women, but elders. And actually in Malawi, you know, the older you are, the more valuable you are here because the um, lifespan here is not as high as in other parts of the world. And you're just seen as wiser. And this was also the same in Myanmar. So I just think that's a wonderful thing to feel like you're getting more valuable with age. So basically I said what I wanted to do, but before I did that, I just wanted to see if it could give me a couple of ideas for structures. Um, I didn't go with any of these, but I just wanted to see if it could kind of like um, give me some black and white drawings. I didn't, I asked for a simpler version. It gave me that. This is really like a trial and error. 
kind of thing. Then it gave me a close up of an older woman. I kind of like that, but I didn't end up using anything like that. I always do my own drawings. I don't use AI to make the artwork for me, but sometimes I just uh, get ideas and I just, um, just to get ideas. This is a, re <laughs> if you want to see um, ugly, this is the the, the um, sketch in my sketchbook, which I did in about 10 seconds, but just to give chat GPT an idea more of what I was looking to do. And then it gave me some more suggestions, which I didn't like really. So then I just started asking it about, can you give me suggestions of patterns from cultures on all six inhabited continents where they traditionally value getting older or they revere wise older women? And it gave me some suggestions, but the reason that I'm not going to go into this right now is because I don't want to choose one, start making a pattern only to find out later, well, actually, um, this particular culture doesn't use blue for that particular symbol because that changes the meaning from adornment to death or something like that. Or, or even this particular culture uh, only once, you know, this particular culture when you use symbols, you have to be from that culture or it's trademark or it's sacred and you really shouldn't, even if you're um, just using it as a visual language. So one thing that I do in my studio sometimes is just research and I come out oftentimes not really with much to show for it other than what I like to say is decisions were made. So I need more time to make decisions about which patterns I'm gonna use. But anyway, that's all set up. So now I'm gonna stop sharing. And uh, I wanted to invite anybody here, if you had any questions or comments, or if you had ideas for any symbols that you might like to work with today. Or you just want to watch. Hi, hi, uh, hi, Kristen, how are you? Hey, Val, good to see good you. To, good to see you too. I use yeah. a lot of Greek mythology in, it may not always show up in my work, but it's always on my mind, specifically Athena. And oh. so when I saw your topic come up, it brought to mind maybe some ways I can get a little more deliberate with that, with that uh, hero, hero, heroine in my mind. <laughs> and you're mostly abstract, correct? So yeah. when you use uh, yes. Athena, how do you use it? Do you use some... Um shapes or colors or patterns that's this is a great question and usually it's shapes shapes mainly mm -hmm. greek architecture mm -hmm. yeah um maybe uh, one thing you could do if you i don't know if you have you used uh, chat gpt at all for anything yet um i've used variations of that off of canva which is very general very general mm -hmm. so i was very curious and i'm glad you did show that that process that you just oh, used great. Because I have not explored that. It's like a it's like a really intelligent Google. I mean, no, no nothing against uh, doing a Google search because that's mm -hmm. always uh, very helpful too. Mm -hmm. But um, in particular, the last sacred geometry work I did, which is a spiral, um, and it has different alternating culture, uh, different representations of the six uh, inhabited continents spiraling out, and I was just always asking it. You know, okay, I need a culture from South America, and this is going to be in shades of purple. And then it would give me five suggestions of, um, of you know, different kind of motifs that I could use that especially look nice in shades of purple. And it won't mm -hmm. suggest something that, no, we never use purple because that's, you know, evil color or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I could never know all there is to know about all the different cultures and history in the world. So I just feel like... Um, like uh, I'm tapping into uh, some divine intelligence, which can help inform uh, inform me and help me make better decisions. I mean, I would have made the stuff anyway, but the research alone just would have taken a lot longer. Right. So, Good point. Good point. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, I'm looking in the the chat here. Awesome. Hi. Um. Hi, Anai. Am I pronouncing your name right, Anai? And uh, Caroline? Anae, yeah. I do Anae, Anae, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry. Um, do you ever worry about AI being inaccurate? I mean, it has so much information, but I mean, we all know you can look on Wikipedia, for example, and get inaccurate information. Yeah, in fact, that's why I decided not to do the uh, the birthday one as part of today's demo. I've set it up. 
but I just need my, you know, like alone studio time. I need like a good hour. And I just really want to more thoroughly research its suggestions because I don't trust it completely. And you shouldn't because it does make mistakes. And I think of AI like a sous chef. So it chops up the carrots, it, it cuts up the onions. Hopefully it, it gets the tears and you don't. But um, it basically sets things up for you, And but you're the master chef. And in the end, if your name goes on it, you're responsible <laughs> for it. So if it gives you some suggestion that doesn't turn out to be uh, accurate, that's why I'm just, um, just covering all my bases. And I know I overthink every pattern that I use, but I just wanna feel like the final work, like, yes, this is what I intended it to mean. This is it, it, these all these elements are supporting each other right down from a conceptual level to, you know, like a thematic level, uh, aesthetically, everything. So maybe I'm a perfectionist, but there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, so I think I'm going to start then. I just want to show you one more thing while I'm not sharing my screen. So this is uh, just another one that I've done recently. This was a fairly quick one for me. Quick means like it took me a week as opposed to like a month. Um, but uh, this is something I've made for um, with a spring theme. It'll be in the Mastrius uh, show that's coming up. And I just wanted to do something where new life is uh, springing out of, of death. <laughs> How is that for like a, a morning uh, sentiment? But yeah, so basically new life coming from the, the dead tree stump. It started out as a stained glass kind of uh, theme. So yeah, so that's basically uh, an example of a finished one. And then I've shown you um, in progress one. And then this is also, I'm, I'm doing a, a Zodiac series and this is the very start of a Taurus image, but all I've got is the, uh, the actual symbol. So there will actually be other things in here, but I'm still researching that as well. So now you see what finished stuff looks like and you see what, um, stuff that I've just started looks like. So now I'm just gonna draw and you're welcome to draw with me. And if you don't, if you wanna draw with me, but you don't really know what kind of symbol to do, then I suggest just do some patches like a quilt. You can fill them with different patterns. You don't need to have anything in front of you or you might, you might have something in front of you. So for example, when I was traveling last summer in the US, one of my travel drawings was I just made all these little rabbit shapes because there were a lot of rabbits around. And I filled them up with textures from New England. I'm from Massachusetts originally. So seashells, rocks, uh, those like rock fences. And um, sorry, I'm trying to remember now, um, you know, like rough uh, cushions that were in the room that I was staying at, just everything New England. So it can be something inspired by where you live, or it could be inspired by mythology, Greek mythology, for example, like Valerie said or it could be somewhere you visited, or it could even just be stuff you have around the house. Sounds good? Oh, thank you, Julie. Okay, so I have uh, my, I don't know if you can see my hand, there's like a delay here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna grab uh, just a sheet of drawing paper and my art supplies are nothing more than some of my archival, I've got some archival pens. I've got some fine tipped pens are still in the case here. And then I am a big fan of, but they're not archival, unfortunately. So I need to always spray my work when it's done with an archival spray. But these are Tombow uh, dual tip pens. And they're just basically like watercolor brushes, but then they have the finer tip here. I do also use paint as well. Um, I'm a mixed media artist because I start out drawing, but then um, inevitably I mess something up. And the only thing I can do is paint over that bit and then I draw over that. And then I might paint over that and I might draw over that. So yeah, for what it's worth, that's that's the, the current style that I'm working in at the moment. All right, so um, are any of you gonna draw along with me or are you just watching? Can I get, can you wave your hands wildly if you're drawing too? <laughs> awesome, okay. Oh, um, maybe I need to move this back a little bit. So I'm still working out this whole like two camera thing. So thank you for your patience. Oh, I think I've made it worse. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, recreate the elephant one. And I actually have my little sculptures here in front of me. 
And I'm just going to do um, super quick stuff. I tend to either start out in pencil or just a, a very light pen so that I can always uh, go over it later. And um, the main contrast in that one, hang on, I'll just uh, share with you again the source image, if you can, if you can see. And I can kind of like put that there so you can kind of see. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this in uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> but I can just get you started anyway. All right, sorry, let me just put that down here. All right, so actually, I think I'm just gonna draw off my postcard here. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go with a, a light gray or maybe like a light brown. So the, the thing about this one is uh, the, the main contrast here, usually the foreground is colorful and the background kind of recedes but I kind of flipped it a little bit. This is kind of interesting too, because in Malawi, fun fact, um, the carvings are usually made by men and the textiles are usually made by women. Women are normally in the background, but they're kind of screaming for you to pay attention to them, or at least that's one of my <laughs> interpretations of this kind of thing. So I'm just gonna very quickly and you have to forgive me because when I do draw, I'm almost always like completely alone with nobody around, like a like some some uh, over important uh, person who feels like they're they just cannot be disturbed. But it's just because I go into um, something of a flow state usually. But it is nice to have company. This is kind of cool. So yeah, if this goes well. And maybe I'll do more of this. I want to actually, I actually have a lot of online students uh, through Udemy and Skillshare and some of these other places that I started working with, well, something like 80,000. But don't, don't be too impressed because a whole bunch of them just kind of pop in and then never do anything. <laughs> I'd say I have like maybe a thousand uh, active students, which is great, actually. But a lot of them, they don't consider themselves to be artists. And so we do a lot of like creativity exercises and things like that. Sorry, I'm doing all the talking. Do you guys want to say anything? <laughs> oh, okay, got quiet there. So, okay, so I can keep talking, right? Awesome. All right, anyway, so I'm just gonna make this uh, super simple uh, outline of my elephant. And if I messed it up, it's okay. I can always fix it because I'm not using really dark ink right now. And I, I, I like to go over my dark bits with white. And I, if I really mess up, I can paint over it. So it's okay. So I'm just going to do this really general elephant shape. But you can do whatever symbol has meaning to you. And again, I just usually start with like outlines and then I just fill them in, fill them in with stuff. I'm actually um, drawing at a bit of an angle that I don't normally do. So my proportions may be a little bit off, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. And actually um, where I live, we have um, cave paintings that are this, um, if you travel about an hour away from where I live, there's this place called Chagoni um, Rock Painting. And there's uh, cave paintings from 4,000 years ago and uh, and 10,000 years ago. So there's like different, different peoples uh, from the area. And it's always kind of a bit stylized. So I don't worry too much if it's like you know, looking a bit weird because um, yeah, it's not so important. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? All right. So anyway, forgive the, the <laughs> forgive the crude nature of that. Now I actually see like things I want to fix on it. Now that I'm looking at it. But uh, one thing I would do, one thing I like to do just to kind of, oops, I totally chose the opposite color, but I want to be using it. All right. Uh, let's go with something darker. So one thing that I like to do is just kind of fill it in with some kind of like light neutral color that I can then I can go over later with darker uh, wood tones. I just need, I need to pick one that's, all right, this is fine. So basically this is almost like making a silhouette, you know, 
all of my art kind of starts out like this. It's got outlines and then I just fill it in with some lighter color. And then I, I like to layer my colors. I, it's funny because I do this also with my digital art as well. And uh, sometimes I'd be designing all day long for uh, United Nations Population Fund and they don't, they're not artists. So they'd be like, oh, can you turn her now actually with AI, you can you can more easily move stuff around. But um, yeah, so they'd be making requests and thinking that I could just snap my fingers and whip something up, you know, with lots of detail in 10 minutes. So I, I felt like I had to educate them a little bit, manage expectations. So um, in this part of Africa, you may have heard of Tinga Tinga artwork. That's more um, something you would find in Kenya. And so you actually find um, animal art. Percent. It's so funny you because when I started your... doing this, I was like, oh, I, you know, the artist moves to Africa and starts painting safari animals. How cliche. <laughs> but at the same time, I live here. And I'm inspired by the artwork from here, and I'm not going to be here much longer, actually. So this is this, yeah. I'm I, I own it. <laughs> I own what I've, uh, you know, made while I was here. So this is actually an artwork. When did I make this? 2021. It's a little bit older, but I just thought I could maybe recreate this a little bit more easily than the sacred geometry stuff. Thank you so much for telling me. Um, and that's actually good for me to know moving forward that maybe I have to poke it once in a while yeah. uh, just so it doesn't go to sleep. You guys can remind me to poke it. <laughs> I definitely never had that studio problem before, having to poke a camera. All right. So anyway, so I'm just kind of making this uh, foreground. And in a perfect world, I would go back in here later and I would add all the wooden textures, the shadow. I have so much fun doing that, to be honest, um, just making it more 3D. But as a start, this is fine. And then what I was going to do, I, I don't know, can you guys help me decide? I was going to decide, am I going to do bottle caps again, like the round shapes, or should I just do like a square patchwork? Should I do try to make it more like this or a totally different version? Any votes? or suggestions so more round or more square oh i you? i kind of like round Kristen. All with right. the elephant. I, <laughs> I do, do too actually the soft edge or maybe a maybe an even an oval or oh that could be interesting too i don't i'm not actually capable of drawing perfect circles uh, mm -hmm. on the fly so there probably will be slightly oval if i do that uh -huh. All right, so then um, the way that this normally works is I'll just grab again another new, I don't know if you can see this, neutral color. So I'm just going with like a gray and then I'm just going to fill in the background with areas to put my patterns. But you can make them as big as you want. You can make them, uh, I, I feel like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> Although he, he made such impressive things in such a short amount of time. I, he was one of my early influences. But uh, yeah, basically I'm just gonna do this and I'm not even gonna worry about them being perfect. Can you see this? Do I need to poke the camera again? All right. So yeah. I can I'm see it. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just basically making this structure. These are my containers. I'm probably using too dark of a gray right now. But that's okay. Just a, it's helpful though that you can see it, right? Yeah. So this could be these could be quilted um, square patterns. You could use the round bottle caps. Oh, and I should share with you. Maybe um, after the call, uh, when when we get the compilation of all the work that everybody made, but I'm actually working on a three D giant larger than life mural right now. It's um. It's at an international school here, and it's uh, the text. It says, be kind. I think they have them also in South Africa, which is where the Malawian school got the idea. So they had one of their welders make this metal sculpture, be kind. It's huge, much bigger than me. And they've asked me to paint it. And um, actually, the woman who asked me 
I, I had given her these postcards and she wanted <laughs> she wanted something like this. And I'm thinking that's going to take a long time, but it's been a really good exercise because um, basically what I've done is I've made say like 12 inch by 12 inch squares all over this three dimensional uh, sculpture and filling them in with Chitenji patterns, uh, Malawian birds, Malawian um, wildlife, um, flowers, plants, we even have a baobab tree, because they basically, even though they're an international school, of course, my first idea was to make it very international, but they actually have a lot of that going on, and they requested to make something that pays homage to our host country of Malawi, and all the Malawian staff and teachers that are at the school, so it's been such a wonderful, fun project, and the fact that it's so big means that I can't sit there and fuss over one little 12 inch square for a month if I ever want to finish it because I gave them also the price of, you know, like my commission fee. And if I ever want to be free to do other projects again, I have to be faster. So it's been a really good pro project and I've been painting with big brushes, which I don't normally do, and then drawing uh, on that as well. Anyway, I'll have to share some pictures with you. That was the other thing I wanted to show you that I forgot to set up for you. But um, I don't know if you can see, just working on this, just making little circles like this. I feel like my junior high art teacher would be very proud of me because he used to um, yell at us because in you know when you're a kid and you're trying to do art, you want everything to be perfect. And we used to erase a lot. And he used to say, no, just, you know, lean into your mistakes. And if you make a mistake, just put more lines. So I'm, I feel like I'm actually making these very flood circles the way he would have liked. <laughs> and um, ironically, when I studied painting, we used to have a class. It was like four or five hours long. I'm just going to poke the camera again so it doesn't freeze. We used to have a four, four and a half hour class called Drawing for Painting Majors. And I hated this class so much. And now I'm, I don't even like to paint anymore. I like to draw, so go figure. I mean, I like to paint too, but I think I like to draw because I like to make little lines and little dots, etc. Wow, I, I'm just wondering when I actually made this, if I was this fast, probably not. You know, it's much slower because it becomes almost like a little meditation when you're doing this. It's just this like repeating pattern. I mean, even the making the circles is a pattern, right? But also, I think our circles are associated with the with femininity, correct? So there's just a lot of circles here in the background, and the fact that these um, patterns tend to be made by women kind of goes nicely together against the um, the wooden sculpture that men tend to make here. You can find men also making the Chitenji cloth and women making the sculptures, but it's a little bit less uh, usual. All right. How's everybody doing? So far so good? This is great fun. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. <laughs> So this, it's funny because um, when they, I think it was Ginger from Mastrius who asked me to do this. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't normally do demonstrations. Ooh. You know, I kind of made that face and that sound. But I actually wanted to do it, A, to get this camera working so that I can make it with online students. Sorry, I heard somebody talking. Were you, was someone trying to say something? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Who is that? Hey. Uh -huh. Could you say it again? I actually think that's Julie trying to get back in. Oh, she is she not here? No, she had she disconnected her internet. Um, cut out. Oh, 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 there exactly. she is. Just <laughs> thank you. I'm just curious. I lost my Wi-Fi there for a minute. So. Oh, you're here. Great. 
I'm, I'm wondering, is there anybody in the group here that prefers drawing to painting or are you just like to do everything? I love painting, but I love including line in my drawing, in my paintings. I love line and just being really expressive with it. Mm -hmm. And um, in your painting, do you, when you're doing, adding the lines, are you using tiny brushes? Or are you actually like going in with uh, with something else to to get those finer lines? Um, I do a mixture of things, like you say, mixed media. So you know, sometimes I'll take a a small branch and dip it in the paint and try and make lines that way, or or with a brush. Or I go in. Um, I often paint with oil, so I go with oil pastel over top and uh, try and make some lines and design. Oh, that's great. Uh, and I like the branch idea. It just reminds me that there's just so many. That's why I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's work uh, from this. There's just so many different ways to do it. And there's no right or wrong way. And I just laugh at myself, too, because I was a painter. And then I went digital. And then I was doing animation, which really takes a long time. Um, but hand-drawn animation, like the old-fashioned kind, like the Disney kind, where you just draw. Um, actually, it's called fine art animation. I bet you guys would like that. It's You're basically painting uh, an image, but then if you get enough of them, you can make your paintings come to life and they move, which sounds amazing until you realize that you need about 12 or 15 of them just to make one second. <laughs> so you have to be really prolific or fast, or reuse certain elements. And there's actually, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking out on his name now, there's um, a Russian father-son duo, Petrov, I think he did um, an Oscar-winning animated short called The Old Man in the Sea, based on the, the novel, uh, on, on glass. So he basically hand-painted all of these uh, pieces of glass and then filmed them and actually made uh, a six minute animation. It took him years just to make six minutes, but it came out so beautiful. You see, I kind of messed up here, but it's okay. So sometimes I, I try to make it just so perfect, but I'll, I'll you know, I'll kind of misalign things, but that's okay. Cause I'll fill in, I'll fill in those gaps with darker colors. Um, again, I don't know if you can, see the, the postcard without the glare, but the, the parts in between, the, the bottle caps are just like an earth color to kind of go with the elephant and they can be dark. Um, I think neutral works best because the, the bottle caps end up being so colorful. And there you go. So I'm round, um, coming down to my bottom layer here and it doesn't bother me at all that they've been cut off here because it's just part of the pattern and it's just assumed that they go on and on. They definitely go on and on. No shortage of Chitenji bottle caps in this country. I just wanted to notify everyone in the chat. Uh, Julie's just said uh, next week we'll come back at the same time and you can submit your work. So if you want to email ginger at masterist.com with your version of uh, Kristen's uh, painting. Um, We'll review them all and look at them and yeah it's super fun to do so no stress and they don't have to be completed either just whatever you get done on them so i think there will be prizes next week too like you said um Ooh. yeah so stay tuned um kristen he's gonna ask do you use mosca markers at all because i find that i like to cut it i like to draw with my paintbrush and then i get i don't know if i get tight or something but Oscar markers to outline things. And... Oh, um, could you put that in the chat? So I, I have to order almost everything that I have um, from outside the country. Some things I can, it's funny, we have an art store and you know what they sell? Fireworks. <laughs> um, you can find, <laughs> you can find some, you know, paints and, and things usually imported from India, but I, um, yeah, I tend to order stuff from Amazon um, yeah. and then it flies them in. <laughs> Yeah, Posca markers are really fun. I and they come in different um, thickness, so there's some really uh, narrow 
thin, fine ones, and then I have, and then I mean, I don't have the biggest ones, but they even get quite large ones. But I, this is probably my biggest one. They're great for the pots and stuff, or um, anyway, they're they're super fun, and they can come in lots of different colors. Well, they're oh, I think great. marker. They're we need Japanese. You need Posca. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll definitely look into those. And I tend to really love the art supplies that come from Japan. They're just a really nice quality as well. Like the like these Tombos that I have. Yes. Yeah, Olive said that she uses clock kick mar markers. I have used those. Oh, yes. I, I like the pasta a bit more. Um, and Julie, if you want to submit your version of Kristen's uh, painting, to do it by 11 a.m. Mountain Time next week. That's great. Sorry, I just I can't believe. Wow, it's so funny. Like when I start drawing, even with people here, that's amazing. I just it just time flies for me anyway. Hopefully for you as well. <laughs> hopefully we're not um, like oh when will this end? But um, anyway, you see that now that I have the structure, you can start filling in uh, the squares. And sometimes I just uh, do one multicolored. But I might like to just map out like where some warm colors are going to go, where some cool colors are going to go, where some darker ones are going to go. I especially love to draw white over black, uh, as well as the dark over light, and uh, just alternating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sorry, um, I feel like we're running a little bit low on time. So I just wanted to kind of fill in some of these, just to give you the general idea. But then once you have that, you can also play around with um, different different textures, different lines. So like, um, I'm just thinking about different uh, Chitenji patterns, things that I've been actually drawing on the mural. So they're just uh, coming in like that. And yeah, so some are just like more round, others are kind of stripey. And everything that I tend to do, you don't have to do this, but I love to um, outline everything in black when it's done just to kind of get those like crisp edges. And, yeah, and as I said before, you can also just kind of go in between. So if you want to take a break from the from the, the bottle caps, you can just do in between the bottle caps and that makes a nice effect as well. Is that um, like outlining stuff with black and stuff, Is do you think that does something for you artistically? Like I, I think some people are drawn to very loose and then some people are drawn to that structure like what does it do for you because I find that I get drawn to that and I like why do I keep on doing that I, I feel like it's a safety blanket or is that it's like my blankie um <laughs> the, the yeah so basically um I I just I don't know you know what it is for me I love color so much I'm very interested in color psychology and the way that color makes people feel so like in my animations as well um, I'll use, you know, certain colors and certain tones. Um, and then in this kind of stuff, I'm not actually using black right now for this outline. I'm just doing dark brown right now. But um, I just find that it makes the color, I just find like when you have brown and black and gray, so those neutral colors, but especially the black outlines, it just pops. And it just, mm, I don't know, I, I really like the colors to pop for me. But I know other people would never, 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 never in a million years uh, outline the stuff. I just, I was always drawn to uh, German expressionism, but then also like, you know, like uh, in comic books or, or anything where there's like, or stained glass windows, where there's always, you're always going to find these dark outlines that mm -hmm. basically holds everything together. It's like right. guts. <laughs> We're finding it, yeah putting some control back into it. Um, so do you want to remind everyone that you can do Kristen's composition just as as it is or your very own? You don't have to do an elephant or the same pattern, just no. with whatever you would like. Um, we are at the hour, Kristen. This has been yeah. delightful and so wonderful. Um, does anyone have any questions for Kristen before we let her go? So I, I hope you've really enjoyed this time. Um, Kristen, we'd love to see the progress on yours. So please post it on your Instagram. Um, what's your Instagram for everyone in case they haven't oh. followed yet? I think, you know what? 
let me just the... let me just quickly grab it and I can pop it in the chat. It would be lovely to see you guys on Instagram. Yeah, it's, so uh, just a reminder, yeah. next week, same time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, Julie and Kristen will come back and uh, go over all the submitted paintings. You can email them by 11 a.m. next Friday, Mountain Time, at ginger at masters.com. And yeah, Kristen uh, dot Palana dot arts is uh, Kristen's Instagram. Um, also, go ahead and share it on Instagram and tag a masters dot community. Let us know that you're doing that. You can do hashtag masters painting challenge in there as well. Um, so Kristen does have uh, a couple things coming up. Um, but before I go over that, Kristen, is there anything that you wanted to share before before we close here? No, just um, have have fun with it. Um, it can be as uh, simple or as complicated as you make it. I tend to make everything complicated, not even by choice. It's just life. <laughs> but um, yeah, have fun with it. And uh, I would love to see you all either in an upcoming mentorship group or in my course, which uh, gets into techniques using uh, AI for research and MIN and uh, other social media tasks and other digital tools to help you work smarter, not harder. But I'll let you, I think you were just about to talk about that. So, yeah. Yeah, I signed up for the course. I'm super excited about it and didn't really think of uh, artificial intelligence as a way for me to do research. Uh, for my art. So I'm super excited about that and what it can do. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and show you uh, how to get to Kristen's course. And also she's got a mentorship group um, coming up. So at Masters, in case you don't know, we have uh, small groups of mentorships of uh, no more than eight artists, plus the mentor and a navigator. And a navigator is an artist also being mentored, but they help facilitate the session and, and ensure that your learning trajectory is being met. So at masters.com, you can click on upcoming courses. And just remember next week, there will be prizes as well. So definitely come back. Um, Kristen's course is right here. AI driven innovation in the art studio. Um, and I'm sure we'll be maybe touching on a little bit of, you know, there's digital art as well, which is something I haven't tried, but a friend of mine was trying it and she said she loved, actually really loved it. And I apologize for the slowness of my computer. It's been acting up. So here it is. Um, here's uh, Kristen's course, uh, course. Um, and yeah, it's very affordable. It's for a couple hours on Saturday, May 4th. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, if you want to scroll down, um, and click on course description. It will give you a description of what Kristen's course will cover and uh, key pictures. And by the end of the workshop, you will, um, and the agenda for it. And supplies, I think, is just bring yourself, right? Note making. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Have, have, a, have a computer, which you need to attend anyway. So there you go. And the great thing about um, when you, join the course you will have access to that recording for one month after it's happened so you'll have lots of time to um go back and re-watch the recording and then um for the mentorship i just clicked on mentorship choose your mentor and i'm going to just scroll down here um we do have a filter grid you can filter on there and choose what works for you but i'm just going to actually just type start typing in Kristen's name here and her mentorship will come up. Um, so Kristen Polana, she is mentoring emerging artists. Um, and emerging, I mean, sometimes you might feel like maybe you're emerging in your art and aspiring in your mindset or aspiring in your mindset and emerging <laughs> um, <laughs> or whatever, but like vice versa. So if you have any questions for that, just contact us and we'll be happy to share. Um, and Kristen's new group, uh, the first session will be on the third Wednesday of every month at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. And then she meets monthly and you can join uh, sessions. You don't have to be at the first one. You can join at the second one if that works better for you. Um, but of course, yeah, I, I think it's always great to be able to start from, from the start there. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, please email us, registrations at masters.com if you have any customer 
questions. So I'll just stop sharing there. Um, we want to thank everyone for being here. Um, and thank you so much Kristen, for all your time. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming. It was lovely to see you all, and I can't wait to see what you make. Sounds good. Thank you, Kristen. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much, Bye, Kristen. Thanks. It was great fun.